Yellow, and welcome to Melinder Blunders. We're back, and uh, today we're going to kind of work off of what we did yesterday, but slight change of pace. We are going to be making a stone gazebo. Um, so I'm going to pull up some reference images here, and we'll get started. Um, some important things to know. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just had some Panda Express. It's the most important thing you gotta know. Ate some fortune cookies. Uh, Panda Express has very bad fortunes. Um, let me read these out to you, actually. We got two, because I eat two like a crazy person. Uh, you will enjoy good health and financial independence. Not currently. And uh, your sense of humor is appreciated in all situations. I guess you all can decide that. Not, not your normal fortune, I'll say that. Anyway, what is really important here? What are we doing in Blender? Um, we're making a gazebo. And it is going to be covered in moss. And uh, we're going to try and do a lot of the same steps we did yesterday for our wind turbine. Um using the array modifier, and we're gonna make bricks and all sorts of stuff. But what's most important is just that we make a good mesh. I'm a little bit less concerned with materials. We're gonna be switching to a new project um, at the turn of 2021. More news on that maybe tomorrow. So uh, we just need to make decent meshes right now. Not that I'm going to not give materialing a good shot while we're here, but it's just not the focus. So, first things first, let's go ahead and um, start building this thing. So, what is a gazebo? It's just a small building. Oh, that's not what I wanted. It's just a small building that um, is basically made out of bricks, right? So, I think I'm just going to start bricking this thing up. Um, now, I say that, the reference image I'm using has it all as one giant block of stone. So let's start with bricks, and we'll take it back from there, and we'll see how we feel. Because I'm not totally sure yet. So we're going to make what is basically a little campfire first. So let's go for that. So what I want to do is grab all of these faces. I subdivided them in a way that I didn't really like, but we'll take it. Things are gonna be moved around and whatever so much that it's not gonna to matter too, too much. We're gonna push it out. Actually, I'm seeing a huge problem immediately. Let's go ahead and grab all of this and all of this. Oh, we need to start our music, my bad. Kind of rushed in at the last second to start stream. So uh, I think I basically lost my mind before we even started. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and do some proportional editing the way that we've done in the past. What on earth happened here? How are we going to do this? Oh, I'm a fool. Why am I trying to subdivide when I can just use a loop cut? There we go. And we'll do 20. 20 was a good number yesterday. We'll do 20 again. <clears throat> a big part of this uh, whole project here is I'm going to be learning how to re-simplify meshes. So as crazy as this might seem, it should return back to zero eventually. That's at least the hope. So let's curve this guy up a little bit. We're gonna bring it forward just a tiny amount and we're gonna proportionally edit the whole thing. Give it a sphere. And it could probably use just a little bit more. Just a tiny curve, right? Whoa, some people are driving crazy down my neighborhood. 
What are they not, I guess? Okay, so let's grab all of this and bevel it and see if that even works. No, it does not. So instead, we're gonna grab just these faces. We're gonna try and bevel those. That works. We will clamp overlap. We'll put them as high as they'll go and then we'll just do a couple little just to get it rounded. We're gonna get lost in the monotony of this pretty quickly so I'm not too concerned with like doing a hundred percent this and that. Also, I don't know if our music is really low or what, but let me turn this bad boy up. There we go. Couldn't even hear it. All right, and then we're gonna bevel all this. This one is a little bit more significant. Let's be extra careful. That looks decent. Yeah, that'll stack correctly. Maybe we wanna do a little bit less. There we go. Yeah, we'll take that. Cool. Um, you know, now that I'm looking at it, oh, I have a little bit of an idea, but it's gonna be kind of dramatic. Let's try it. Let's see how this works. That goes right to there, perfect. Okay, hear me out. Let's see if this is a decent way of solving this problem. We want shrink. Where is shrink? Oh, it's here. Okay, check it. If I go like this. Oh, it didn't get that last little bit right there. We got all those. Let's do the same thing on the other side. And now I think we should be good to go. Right. That one got connected. Did this one get connected? It did, perfect. Okay, let's try it again. Now, if I proportion it correctly, very small proportions. Uh, that really doesn't do anything. Okay, I'm gonna bring it in. Hear me out. And then we'll do this and we'll smooth it. Nope. Okay, we'll keep it as is. If there's some overlap, you know, it is what it is, I guess. I'd love to bring these edges in. I'm just not sure how we're gonna do it. In fact, this might be a good learning opportunity while we're here. You know, it seems like we're taking a long time on this first step, but if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. So let's decimate it. And we'll decimate it by... We'll go half. Maybe even a little bit more than that. If I shade it smooth, I don't necessarily love that. Yeah, that'll do. Now it should be a little bit easier to edit. This part's messy, I don't love this. I should convert to tries, but I'll do that when I'm done. Okay. This would maybe be a really nice place to um, sculpt. 
But again, I'm trying not to get too caught up in that just because I think it's a shorthand for what we want to be doing and I'm going to just do it forever. So let's let's carry on. Um, let's go ahead and hit apply. Come on, there we go. We're set on this model. Let's go ahead and make an array. And here we go. We're gonna do the same thing we did yesterday. Is it gonna be the worst thing in the world? I don't know. But we're back to this and the object is the empty. Why did you get huge? What about the empty made you huge? What does that do? Oh, I can't for the life of me figure out what is going on with this. Okay, fit curve. Hear me out. If I make a 10 meter curve, and I get rid of the empty and I go back to the circle and I say fit curve circle. What? Why is it doing that? The array modifier makes no sense. I can't even believe how many times I've used this modifier and not had it freak out like this. I'm gonna have to like relearn the modifier for sure. Okay, well this brings me to a much different idea. Um, we're gonna take this brick, we're gonna put it up here and we're gonna call it Brick Proto, but I'm gonna try something different. Goodbye, Brick. You're not a part of this anymore. Okay, hear me out. Let's make a cylinder and we'll put a, no, we'll leave it as is. We'll make a cylinder. We're gonna make it very detailed and it's gonna be 10, right? So what are we gonna do with this thing? I am going to blow a hole right through the center of it. Well, I should probably grab the front face first. There we go. Um, there's that. And we can just go ahead and delete that face. Hmm, there must be an easier way to just put a face through something, right? Let's do that. Because then we're in the right camp. Delete the face, delete you. And then, yeah, I can just grab this and bring it up. And as long as you're not looking at this from below, it shouldn't matter at all. Although it definitely will matter. Oh no. I've goofed it. We've goofed it. All right. We're gonna do the annoying part of um, connecting all these pieces together. In a different universe, I would do like a you laugh, you lose challenge while we do all this tedious work, but that is not in the cards right now. So I hope you see where I'm going with this. We're gonna just simulate bricks on this thing. I'm debating whether we're gonna do it with materials or actually um, sculpt it. I like the idea of sculpting it because then we can, um, like then it's done and I don't have to worry about like importing shaders and all that chaos. But shader is gonna be easier. 
And if I want to change anything, I can just change it really quickly. So we'll save this for last, I think. We'll start moving on to the next part after this. Um, in a different life, I think I would have made this like a hexagon. And while I'm sitting here and really suffering, we're gonna make it a hexagon. Um, so sorry for darting all around and doing all sorts of stuff. This is just part of the thinking process for me. What if we did eight? What if we did an octagon? Oh, that's a good shape. That's a really nice shape. I love that. Okay, we'll take that. We're gonna do the same thing as before. I'm gonna blow a hole in it. This is where I'm like, is there a way just to blow the hole all the way through it? I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not really sure of anything, right? Sort of my whole shtick is that I don't know what I'm doing. Hmm, new idea, new idea. What if we grab this and bring it up? Okay, so they're even. No, that's not gonna work. Let's not do that. Okay, so we're here and then I'll just connect the pieces. Yep, 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 yep. I had kind of a fancy solution, but fancy is fancy, right? Why not, why get stuck in it? All right. And we are going. So this should be perfect when we actually end up making this. Hey, I feel like I didn't do one of those correctly, but it took anyway. Cool. So this is our baseline structure. I'm inclined to extrude one of these faces outward. And I'm gonna do it. And we're gonna do it. So we'll do that, and then we'll grab all of these, and we will extrude along normals. There we go. Just enough to make a little step for people to get in here. The scaling, I think, is gonna be a little off. We're just gonna have to learn that the hard way. I'm not the best at that kind of stuff yet. There we go. Cool. And I'm gonna round it all out and stuff through sculpting when we're ready. But we're not ready for that. So now what we wanna be doing is building out the pillars for this thing. Um, so let's make them and then we'll make the roof and then from the roof we'll do all the articulation and then we should be just about there, I'd say. Okay. So this part's gonna be very important for us because if I do it wrong, it's gonna be permanently wrong. I mean, not permanent, but it's gonna be very frustrating to get it right. Okay, so you, my friend. Oh, I gotta think about this. We are going to take it, transform it, turn it 45 degrees, wrong way. We're gonna be doing this all by math, not by eye, because I want the numbers to be 
perfect. Okay, and then we're gonna scooch on over here. There should be a round number that you just about equal. Does that look about right to you? That looks about wrong to me. Well, we'll push you up nonetheless. Yep, two meters exactly. Now it sits right up on there. And now we're gonna shrink this guy down to 0.5. We should be. Okay, so now that's 0.5, it's gonna be 1.5. There we go, still sitting there. 0.5, negative 10 is gonna be too far. That's the corner. Okay, so we're between this, negative 9.5. It's too, too little. We're gonna keep going. Negative 9.4. Oh, that little edge right there. We actually need this thing to be a little smaller now that I'm looking at it. So let's go ahead and 0 0.4, 0 0.4. And then we'll drop it to 1.4. And really looking at this angle, I'm thinking negative 9.2. Too much. Hey, we'll take it. Okay. So that's part one. Now is where it's gonna get a little nutty. We gotta turn this thing into a circle. This is where we're gonna have a lot of trouble, I think. So, let's grab this. I kinda liken it being a perfect square. I think that looks fine. But we're gonna have to inset a face on its surface right here. No, it's not what I wanted. Okay, we're insetting a face. Bear with me on this. This is gonna get messy real quick. So we'll do... We'll keep it really easy and we'll do three. Three on each. You might see what I'm doing here. We're gonna make really gross ingons, and I'm hoping that when we try to quad this whole mesh, it'll come together. So, we're gonna grab you, and we're gonna we're gonna hope and pray. Is that what I want? Is that smooth? That's not smooth. We're smooth. That is smooth. Why did it not affect that one right there? Okay, we'll do we'll do some of the work ourselves then. Okay, so check it. I'm gonna push these guys in. Um, this is a weird angle. I'm, my brain kind of is melting at this. We'll push you in at, oh, I don't know. I don't know about this. This is too much for me. Um. That math was like really intense. Um, I think a different way to do it is Oh, wait a second. Hey, okay, we got it. 
we've made what is effectively a very nice looking circle. It's a little spiky on the ends. I think it might be good enough though. Cool. And we'll go ahead and just pull this thing out. Is that enough? Do, 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 do. Thinking off the top of my head, how big is a human? Having a human here for scale would be huge for me. Um, it shouldn't be too, too hard to rescale this if I have to. So we'll chill, we'll call that it. Um, what I am gonna do here is grab all this and we're just gonna pull it up a little bit. Right, and then we can take one of these. That's not gonna work. Kinda wanted to cut this in half and make like a weird scoop. When we go to model it, I think I'm gonna keep that in mind. I'd love to make like spikes coming off here a little bit. But yeah, it looks pretty solid. When we round all this out, we'll get it all even and get it connecting correctly. But as a basic shape, that's what we want. I'm so inclined just to put this thing on a array, but arrays are not for us today. I don't even think it's worth um, attempting at this point. Okay, so you are pillar number one and you are G base. So pillar number one. Let's do one favor really quick. Object set origin to 3D cursor. It's not my favorite thing in the world, but it'll do. It's the, the procedure that we know how to work. Um, so now I will take you and we will Alt D, right click, Alt D, right click, Alt D, right click, Alt D, right click, Alt D, right click. We're gonna name them appropriate so we know what we're working on. Very important, always name your work. You're gonna get lost if you don't. It's super, super important. And we're just pushing forward. We are getting the heck through this thing. Um, I realized that we used an octagon, so we're gonna do two more. Uh, pillar seven and pillar eight. What would be just the coolest thing in the world is just to use an array modifier and not have to do all this and just leave the array running. But arrays don't want to work for us. So I want to relearn how to do an array modifier. I wonder if I like deleted that information in my head somewhere. Cool. So now we just rotate it. Um, we're rotating by eights, which in my mind, the math is very odd because it's 360 degrees divided by eight. Um, and I really have fried my brain today. So, hey, just a fun fact. Let's go ahead and plug it into our, we'll plug it right into our calculator, 45. Okay, so each of these is gonna go 45 degrees. It says it's already rotated 45 degrees. What does that mean? Oh, I should have edited one of the corner ones first. That would have helped me so much. All right, oh well. Uh, now we have some pretty simple math just to uh, bring all this forward. Doesn't mean I'm not gonna mess it up, but um, you know, is what it is. Um, 225, I believe, yep. And then it'll be 270. And then it'll be uh, 315. And then you will be zero. Hey, look at that. It's a gazebo. It might actually be in our best interest to absolutely connect all of this together. 
Hmm. Because I'm thinking when we sculpt, we're going to have little gaps, right? So maybe I won't just want to go down from there. I don't know. We'll solve it when we solve it. It's no big deal right now. Um. Maybe we... Yeah, I don't think we want to connect it. That's probably a really bad idea. So, making the roof. Uh, a gazebo roof is pretty crazy looking. Um... So, I'm very inclined to click you. Go into edit mode. Okay, check this out. Here's the brilliancy. Ready? We're going to... Well, I could just simply connect them, right? There's nothing wrong with connecting these, I don't think. I was gonna extrude them, but like, why even bother with that? Um, let's try this. Do this, connect. Hey, okay. So we got a raised little bit in here. Now I will make the central part of this. Um, and in my reference shot, it is a circle. So we will add a cylinder. This one will be 100. It's going to be pretty small. That looks about right to me. And we'll just get going on this thing. Now, I'm not really following my reference too, too strongly. Um, because there's so many little things that we're going to change about this. But enough to know what we're up to. That's very important. Okay. This one's tough. This one's actually really tough for me. Because... <laughs> Let me try again. Let's try something else real quick. What if I put... What if I put nothing in it? Right? I think this is the way we want to do it. I'm going to do 3.5. And then we're going to go to edit mode. We're going to grab only the external faces. Oh, I guess that counts as everything when you're looking at it like this. And we're going to extrude out. There we go. That's how I should have done the outer gazebo before. We're learning. We're learning. We're going to grab the whole thing, and we're going to scooch it on up. Now, eventually, I'm going to have to push into this thing and make crenellations and weird stuff and whatever. We're not doing that today. Like, I don't even know when I'm going to do that. That's going to be so difficult. Um, I'm really vibing on the geometry nodes getting released. I know they're in the experimental branch, but I don't really trust myself with the experimental branch right now. Um, but eventually, those nodes are going to come out. And, oh boy, I'm going to lose my mind. Okay, so this little circle thing sits on a base, and that base is going to be supported by some more pillars, but they're going to be a little bit more geometric than this. So kind of a similar sort of style to yesterday. We're going to add a mesh, yet another cylinder, yet another nothing. This one will be eight as well. And then we'll go into edit mode. We will extrude along normals. This one's gonna be a bit bigger and it's gonna be really skinny. Nope, that's not what I wanted. There we go. Just about there and it's gonna be really rounded when we're done with it. 
So we ain't stressing those details. This is where we redo our sizes just a little bit. That works. That works really well. Okay, cool. Now, in my vision of this model, a human can fit underneath this. Do I feel comfortable with that? As a measurement, it looks a little tight to me. Let's grab both of these and scooch them on up. Should a human be able to fit under that? Yeah, it looks good. That's a good sight line. You're looking out over the horizon. Yeah, that's fine. This'll do. Cool, so I just gotta get this pillar to match. So we'll go into edit mode. We will grab you and we will just pull you up. I will match it exactly. There we go. Back to object mode and we're chilling. We are big chilling now. Okay, let's make some more pillars. This is the sort of stuff that I need to get good at um, doing fast. This is the sort of stuff that's gonna matter. Okay, we're making a really small little pillar. I think it might even be smaller than that. If it's stone, I'm not super worried. So we'll take it. We'll take you. Okay, let's go ahead and extend this bad boy up. There we go. I'm inclined, I'm very inclined to move it back in line with that wall right there. Like if we bring the seams right next to each other. What is this gonna do for us? That's too much. Oh, it's like really small dimensions. I actually kind of like that. A little bit of overlap because then we can round it. This will be fine. In fact, I might go ahead and round it right now. Let's do that. Because I think that could look really good for us. So let's put a bevel on here. Oh, the bevel is not going to like us too much. There we go. I'm just going to get it started and then we'll do the rest of it manually. So it's going to be 0 0.02, 0 0.017. Oh wait, I messed it up, 0 0.02. 0 0.015, 0 0.016. Oh, it's close. So, spoilers, planning on putting this in a game. There we go, I've revealed it. There's the side project. I'm working on a little game. It's a simple game. Um, it's not, you know, it's not gonna be a blockbuster release or anything like that. It's just something to get my feet wet. Um, so if you play the game and you see this, let me know. You, you send them back to me. But I don't think you're gonna notice it. In fact, I highly doubt you're going to notice it. 
Uh, if I merge all of this together, I can do a cool little scoop. I'm not sure if we even want to do it. I kind of like it sitting on this as if it was a base. We might merge all the pillars to this guy. Okay. So we're here. Um, let's grab this object and let's go ahead and set origin to 3D cursor. Okay, now we really got to name some stuff. We'll call you Bell. We'll call you Bell Base. We'll call you Inner Pillar 1. And second verse, same as the first. We're going to start alt-clicking the heck out of this thing. I think that might be enough. Let's see here. Six. Seven. And eight. It is indeed enough. Okay, so we're going to start rotating. Um... So we're gonna use the exact same measurements as last time, but this time they're gonna be offset because we didn't do the first rotation. So we're just doing math. The dreaded math. We're just going up one by one. Two twenty-five. Seven should be 270, kind of guessed that one. And then you should be 315, I think. Yeah, perfect. Cool. It's coming together. We still got 45 minutes. We've done great work on this. I have no idea how I'm gonna do certain aspects of it, but there's certainly enough to do right now that we don't need to get stuck up in it. Um, I have a little bit of insider knowledge for all of you. Uh, what we're actually gonna do is that weather vane that we made yesterday is gonna sit up on top of here and we're gonna feed it down and do something inside this little bell here. So I'm hoping we're able to do that today. If not, it is what it is. It's not the worst thing in the world. Um, what we're gonna wanna do here is probably roughly the same thing that we've been doing before. Let's bring that out. And I gotta find the center one, which I just made very hard for myself. Oops. Um, I believe it's you. Yep, that's the center one, for sure. Oh, I'm kind of doubting now. There might be two center ones. I think I might have messed it up. Okay, well, if there's no, if there's two center ones, I'd rather lean up. So let's do this. And we will expand it outwards just a little bit. Whoa, controls got all wonky there. We're turning on proportional editing. We're turning on sphere. And we're gonna slowly work our way up. You wanna be extra careful with this stuff. Screw up the whole mesh if you uh, get a little too precocious here. There we go, we made a bowl. I definitely missed the, um, so th this was definitely our center one because this part's all messed up at the bottom. But I'm kind of okay with having that flat bit there. I'm sort of quizzing the idea of maybe we increase this and get rid of the base and let this be its own base. But I'd have to make some sort of stilts or something for these. I'm not sure yet. Let's not worry about that. So first off, yeah, that's it. Um, we got 45 minutes. Let's go ahead and get going on this thing. 
And if I come down here, yeah, you can go right up in there. Perfect. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Let's make the roof. Roof, we're gonna use a cylinder as per the norm, and then I'm going to just start crinolating things. Oh, it's a pretty funky shape, that's for sure. We're gonna inset a number of faces onto this. I'm actually gonna inset two faces or three faces and pull them down. So check this out. We got a cylinder. It needs to be the same as before, maybe even a little bit bigger now that I'm seeing it. There we go. It's got eight, excellent, it's perfect, it's exactly what we need. And we're just gonna barely place it on top of this thing. We'll get the proportions right eventually. Oh, I gotta clean up my collections, this looks pretty bad. Okay, you're gonna be called Roof Base. And if we're doing collections right now, let's just go ahead and call this roof and we'll set everything here we'll say we're done with the main group for now and now we got to make like a pagoda this is where it's all gonna come together this is where it's gonna look not like grecian and more uh, i don't want to say oriental i think oriental might actually be an offensive term um but it's it's gonna look more like what it's supposed to look like so, looking at this, I actually have a strange idea, very weird idea. What if we subdivided it here? Yep, this is gonna work. This is gonna work really well. So we're gonna grab that. We're gonna grab all of these faces and we're gonna extrude along normals and make them way smaller. Right about there we'll do. And then this is gonna come up and make um, this like crazy looking holder. So have I done this correctly? What does this do? Delete faces. Why are there two faces here? What is that? All right, we'll fix it anyway. That's a pretty good shape. I like this shape. Okay. So, oh. Oh, we've done it. Oh, we've done it. Oh, we've done it. I don't even have to, I was getting worried that I was gonna have to do a different kind of thing, but no, 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 we're just gonna do this, check it. Uh, it kind of messed up. I don't know why it messed up so much. Okay, we'll do, we'll go ahead and do the tedious part. Um, that's fine. So, um, if you all are curious, I will spill the beans. I will tell you what the great secret here is. Um, this is, you know, vaguely Buddhist. It's fantasy. So, you know, in the, in the context that I am writing this story, I mean, Buddhism doesn't exist, right? They're not, they're not actually Buddhist. There's no actual, like, Asian European culture or whatever. Um but it's gonna be vaguely Buddhist. And so this gazebo is gonna have the weather vane we made yesterday above it, spinning, turning, grabbing wind, whatever. And I made a little mechanism that um, is going to play a bell sound depending on what direction the wind is going in. So I don't know if we're gonna make that whole mechanism today. It's gonna go inside of here. Um, but that's the idea for this. That was the whole inspiration behind this thing was to make a, like a wind 
thing. And so if you have a bunch of these sitting in a field, right? One here, one here, one here, one here. Realistically, the wind should be going in roughly the same direction everywhere. But if it isn't, then you get a little chorus effect. You get kind of um, different pitches and you can vaguely sort of tell what's going on. Um, if you know Buddhist culture to some degree, you know that a lot of their stuff is just sort of for fun. Not for fun, but for like spiritual relevance. So it doesn't have to be the most scientific thing in the world, just has to get the job done. Um, all right. That looks pretty decent to me. Let's go ahead into object mode and pull this guy down just a little bit. That looks about right to me. We're gonna put boxes here that hold up the pillars or the pillars hold up the boxes. But first things first, let's go ahead and inset like a thousand faces into this thing. Um, I kind of wanna just click subdivide and I'm going to. It did nothing. Okay, good to know. Instead, we will inset faces. And I'm like, can I inset faces like a thousand times per second? How many faces can I inset into this thing? Hmm. Different idea. I know we're taking time out to do stuff, but I'm trying to think more efficiently so in the future we don't have to worry about it. Check this. Whoa. It's a cool shape, it's not what I wanted. No. Okay, let's inset one face and then let's triangulate. Why does I wanna triangulate there? That's weird. Okay, tell you what, we'll grab this and we'll grab this and we'll make one cross section and I'm worried that the cross sections are going to have a problem. So we'll grab you. That's still one face, right? Yes. Now if I triangulate you, why? Uh, okay. We'll just delete the face, I guess. And we'll hope and pray that we don't mess up our clicks here. Probably should be hiding some of this stuff. Oh, we goofed it. I messed it up. There we go. So we got you, you, and you. Make a pizza pie. Make a pizza pie. And we're just gonna keep doing it. Now, the thought is, I'm gonna pull this up like we're making a regular triangular roof, but with a bunch of subdivisions, and then can I do like a do 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 sort of like stepping stone of subdivisions on here? So let's see. Oh, that's gorgeous. Oh, that's really pretty. Oh, this is gonna look really cool if it works. Uh, 10 is the max. I think that's a decent size. Let's grab that. So we'll grab you. We're gonna pull you up. Pretty high too. If I proportion it, and we get the proportion big enough, and instead of smooth, we do not that. Oh, that's an interesting way to make like mountains. I should keep that in mind next time. Oh, so close to what we want. So, so close to what we want, but not right. So close to what we want. Man. Sharp is the correct shape, but it needs to come down a little bit more. Man. 
Man, that is not quite what we wanted. I yeah, I don't know what I was expecting. Hmm. Okay, I think we can do it manually. I'm gonna do it the manual way. So check this. We're gonna grab you, bring you up to five. This is gonna get annoying really quick, my apologies. Oh no, it doesn't wanna connect correctly. Oh, this is, this is frustrating. Is it gonna do this the whole time we're doing this? Okay, so theoretically, I should probably bring this up to 4.8. Uh, maybe even a little bit less than that. Let's do 4.5. We'll try to guesstimate what a um, exponential curve is gonna look like on this thing. So if I try to grab you guys, yeah, they don't wanna grab. This is gonna be very tedious. I may be inclined to sculpt this then. That'll give it way more of a stone look too. So let's... Yeah, let's do that. Let's opt for that. I'm gonna undo all this. One and done. Perfect. So last but not least, we'll go ahead and make our little tips of these pillars up here. And second verse, same as the first. We're gonna go ahead and make a bunch of them. So first things first, we got a cube and the cube is gonna come up right there. All the way up. And as long as it connects right there, perfect. And it connects right there, perfect. We can go ahead and slim it down. We'll say right about there is good. Although I kind of like it being flush with this. This could be a conflict of interest if I do this, but I've done worse in my life. Yeah, I might merge these two things together now that I'm looking at it. This is kind of cool. Okay. So in the sketch that I'm looking at, they're like full on faces. Um, I think that's gonna be a little tough to do, but we'll give it a shot. We'll grab you and subdivide you and we'll grab these two faces and pull them all the way forward here. Ah, that'll be fine. And then we need to grab this guy right up here. And this is gonna be like a hook. This might be a good opportunity to chill out a little bit. So let's, let's go ahead and actually sculpt it. We'll get it pretty small. And I will smooth out some surfaces here. Nope, we want a mirror on our X. Is that our X? Our Y, there we go. So we're just, nope, that's a little too much for me. Let's lower the strength on this guy and increase our size. Let's give this a shot. So theoretically, this should work. So 
So I want these curves to be really tight. We have passed from the territory of engineering and logic into full on artistry. We kind of made that change really drastically. So let's try to chill it a little bit. But that's not a bad angle. It actually looks pretty good. It looks like a, the goal for me is to make sort of a mermaidy sort of shape on the front of a ship. It's not gonna be a mermaid, but like that sort of like emblem that comes forward and holds something up. I might even put like two wings that come off here. I'm not sure yet. A bird would be kind of cool. A bird might really actually do it now that I'm thinking about it. So let's shoot for that. So we'll hit our remesh a couple of times. Okay, so we got a shape. Um, it looks a little weird and round. Um, everything's gonna be rounded and stoned up eventually, so just mind it for now. It'll all make sense when it's said and done. Um, but we wanna make like a bird shape. So let's go ahead and build a beak off of this. We're just gonna keep remeshing this bad boy. And then we'll do some averaging to get it into beak shape. A duck shape might actually be really nice for us. Let's see. Looks about like a duck to me. It's a little too flat for my liking, but it does work. I think I gotta increase my mesh quite a bit if we're gonna really make this work. We're gonna drop our strength down. Nope, it's not what I meant to do. Drop our strength down pretty far get really close to this thing. The reason I'm taking my time and actually doing detail on this one right now is because I plan on copying it to all the other pillars and then joining it to the roof here eventually. And if I don't sit here and take the time for it right now, it's, I mean, I'm just gonna have to do it from scratch every single time. Whereas right now I can go ahead and copy it. So we're just taking our sweet time to get it going. Um, making a wing, that is gonna be a heck of an issue. Get out of the roof, there we go. So we're just gonna keep remeshing and getting this shape right. All right. Get them strong, get them big. Make a boy we can be proud of. Um, I think a really tough part of this, despite me being an absolute uh, 3D modeling newbie, is um, I'm trying to think in terms of a culture that isn't my own. You know, you could be inclined to call that appropriation, but it's a culture that doesn't even exist. So what do you say to that? Um, but yeah, trying to think in terms of something that I myself am not a part of, that's, that's very difficult. That's something that I think game developers probably really struggle with. Um, we should be using clay strips to get into here. Because I kind of just want to destroy that part. Come on. Come on. Just destroy it. Get out of here. We don't want you anymore. There we go. 
Get out of here. I think it's just going into the actual um, roof. I don't think it's actually getting destroyed. Let's do some averaging and see if we can bring it back. Yeah, it's just up in the roof. What happened? We'll have to like really cut that out here in a second, but we made a good wing shape. Okay, so averaging out the wing, really trying to break that part down. And just bringing it nice and smooth on up. We're in, we're going. There's certainly a lot of finesse that's gonna have to be done here, but today's not the day for it. Get that elbow in there. Okay, so uh, for the sake of our time, because we're gonna run out of time really quick and there's like a thousand things I can do to this now that I'm realizing how intensive it's gonna be. Take my word for it. This thing's gonna be like a tribal duck eventually. It will. It looks like a mess right now. It's a big blob. It will not be a blob eventually. It'll be refined. Um, but for the time being, that's what that thing's gonna be. We're gonna go ahead and do the same thing we've been doing before. Um, I will go ahead and put it in here and we'll call this guy idle support one um, I also want to make little tiny differences between each one after we've made the copies. So Yeah, we're not gonna get lost in this for now um, We got to set the object to 3d cursor and then second verse same as the first we're gonna just start making copies um, I should actually make the copies. Hello? No, 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 no. You should be copying in here. There we go. And we got enough of them. I will call it IS to save myself the headache. I doubt anything else is going to be called IS, so we're not worried about it. Nope, IS7, there we go. And IS8, cool. So we're gonna continue our trend from earlier and we're gonna go ahead and move them. So you're gonna go 45, you will go 90, you will go 135, 180, um, 225, 270, and 315. Look at that. Monument of the ducks. Look how sweet they are. They look like weirdo blobs. Our little duck temple. Uh, cool. There is a lot left to do on here. And I am looking at our time. And I am worried about how much time we have. So... I think we're gonna chill on this for now. Um, let's do some material work. Just get it looking like something. Um, so, what HDRI do we want? I'm thinking Highlands is nice. I'd like a little bit of water. Overcast cliffs, that'll do. And here we are. 
pretty neutral looking colors there. We'll go to object and we'll start with the base. This is gonna be called our mossy stone. It's gonna be ever so slightly glossy. Let's get up and close and personal in here. It is going to be slightly glossy. Um, this is going to be very similar to what we did yesterday. Although I feel a little bit more comfortable doing stone textures rather than wood textures. Wood is just messy. Wood is so messy and kind of gross, whereas stone, you can get away with a lot in stone. Okay, that'll be our stone colors. Let's make this actually a little darker. And then our moss will go from black to green. I like that green if it's dark. Maybe even a little bit darker than that. There we go. That's a moss. So we got to hook it all up. Ooh, look at the reflections in there. That's a nice, that's a nice amount of reflection. To give it kind of that like rain dewy look. Yeah, that reflection works for me. Um, let's go ahead and connect these bad boys up with a mix RGB. We will hit, I will hit add. I like the add function a little bit more on here. Plug it in. We get a bad looking thing. Um, so first off, we're gonna do a Musgrave. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what the implication of Musgrave is supposed to be, but for me, it means dirt. It has always and will always be the dirt modifier for me. Okay. I don't know why it's so long. Everything looks so long on this. I wonder if that's because the mesh is so blown out. Maybe once we do some um, smoothing, it'll change. So we'll take it for what it's worth right now. Okay, so that's that. And we're gonna grab a... Oh, this one's tough. This one's hard for me to imagine. I'm very inclined towards noise and also using displacement. This should be a lot darker, actually, now that I'm seeing it. Let's say 0.1. Why does it look so simple? What is going on here? It should be like way darker, like way, way, way darker. What is going on? Why is it like this? Yeah. You got a problem, bud? Oh, it's just adding a white. Okay, never mind. We'll do a mix. There we go. Now I can make it less dark. Like a point 0.3 will do. does not work. Ah, we'll fix that just in a second. Let me get the texture right first. 
texture is actually a little bit small for me. But I can tell a lot just by doing this. So check it out. We got a really flat, very 3D looking surface. And then all of a sudden... Oh, that looks terrible. What? Yeah, something weird is going on here. Um, it shouldn't look like that. Let's go back to our main. Let's edit this real quick. You all need to chill out. There we go. That should do it a number of favors. You will see the roof is gonna look pretty bad. I don't have a way of solving that right now. Um, same thing for you. We will go ahead and just do two subdivisions. Whoa, not this whole thing. I want the whole thing. There we go. That should make things quite a bit better for us. Let's go back. It doesn't. That's a little spooky for me. It shouldn't be such long, weird lines. That doesn't make any sense to me. There's certainly a lot to learn, that's for sure. Okay, well, now that we're looking at this, I am more inclined to do a wave texture. So let's grab a wave. That looks relatively decent for colors. Let's go ahead and even make this quite a bit brighter. We'll make you like 0.5 and we'll make you like 0.65. There we go. Okay, we got it dividing on the x-axis with a good amount of distortion. And the scale should be huge. If the scale's huge, the distortion can go down a little bit. Nope, never mind. Detail goes up, detail scale goes up. And that is stone. There we go. That is our stone texture. Now, I am inclined to try something nutso. So we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it, okay. You get out of here. We're gonna do vector math. And it might not work. Does that work? Does this work? Does that work? Oh, it gets weird. I just want it to smooth out over these bits, these um, green bits. Hmm. There's a lot to think about here. So we're not gonna stress. We got a pretty decent looking stone structure here now um, that I can actually make even a little bit darker once again. Just a little bit though. And you can see the green kind of poking through. So I'm not too, too worried. I think we might want even a little bit less of that green. And I think the green is gonna want a little bit of blue in its texture. So we'll say 0.3. And cool. So that is just an impromptu, kind of badly modeled mossy stone. Part of me thinks I should cell shade this to make it um, 
a little bit more obvious where the divisions and things are, but that's for next time. We are fully out of time today. So yeah, they're pretty much all gonna get the exact same texture. Um, as boring as that is, I will fix it all as we go, don't worry. The only thing that needs it differently is the bell and the bell is gonna be made of brass. I'm gonna put little brass fittings all over the place on this mesh. So it'll have pops of color for sure. But in the beginning here, it's just gonna be simple. Um, theoretically, there should be a bunch of shallow water all around this and sort of like a swampy, marshy walk up. So the color will work. We'll get there, don't worry. Now comes this bell. Um, I want everything to be dark except for the bell. Although I kind of don't mind working on it like this. Let's do this. We will call you brass, although it might be bronze instead of brass, who knows. And we're gonna, we're gonna do a little bit of weirdness. I have some weird ideas for this. Check it. I'm gonna go glossy, but I'm also gonna add a little bit of glass to it. I don't know how that's gonna look, but I just have an idea. It should be pretty reflective. Um, and then we'll go ahead and use our color ramp. And we'll give it a nice kind of yellowy vibe. There we go. That's gonna be our color. Oh, it's got like little dimples all over it. How are we gonna do that? I would like to um, take advantage of that actually. I'm thinking a magic texture, if we make it really small, could do it. I kind of want it to look like hammered metal. That would be it. Like that's sort of the vibe, right? Oh, actually I know exactly how to do this. I know exactly how we're gonna do this. Check it, we got the magic texture, but we're also gonna throw a Vernoy on top of it. It's not quite what I expected to happen. There we go, that was the look. Okay, so we'll scale it up. And Euclidean is probably what we want because it makes circles. If we drop this down, what happens? They overlap a little more than I like. Let's try spicing it up just a little bit. Yeah, they overlap here, that's not ideal. I think we just have the wrong number for this thing. It looks good though. It looks like really good. I think we might just take that. If I could plug that into a geometry node and like make holes that go through it for each of these ridges, ooh, we would be in so much business. But I think that actually looks pretty good. For the sake of our sanity, can I brighten it a little bit? No. Okay. I have one more operation that I want to do to this that I think might remedy our situation. 
Let's do a mix shader and we'll put just the tiniest amount of glass on this thing. Okay, hear me out. Does this even matter? No, it doesn't matter. Let's not do that. It doesn't need to be see-through or anything like that. So we're not worrying about it. Instead, I am gonna use index of refraction in a different way. Let's see what this does. Oh, it just completely overwrote that thing that we just did. Why did it do that? That's a little weird. I kind of didn't expect that to happen. Okay. That looks good, it's just not the right texture for us. Hello, get us out of this. Hmm. Yep, this is a little tough. Okay, so we're not gonna use index of refraction for it. Nope, not happening. Instead, let's see if we can't stop that overlap just a little bit using some tricky, tricky stuff. I'm thinking reflections will do the job. Nope, just completely overrides it. Why is that? Whoa. Hmm, strange. Weird how you get different results for things. Oh, did that do it? That looks like it might have done it. Why did UV do this? I'm not seeing any crossover points anymore. Oh, there's one right there. There's one right there, okay, nope. We'll go ahead and stick with our original. Again, we're gonna have time to change all this. I'm gonna be doing more of this tomorrow. So, uh... Hey, there's our weird hammered bell thing. Meant to look like a drummer's fancy symbol or something. But yeah, um, I mean, it's a weird sketch so far. There is a lot, a lot, a lot of work for us to do. In no way do I think we are done or anything like that. What are these lines that I'm looking at? Um, so yeah, we'll go about fixing all this up tomorrow. I doubt we'll even finish it tomorrow, but this will be a continuous project for us, so no stress if it looks like junk right now. It will eventually not look like junk, I promise. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and hit save, and I realize I didn't save this whole time. My bad. And uh, we'll come on back in just a few minutes with uh, Cave Story. Just a classic, just a perfect classic game. So I'll see you all there.